Okay. Uh, first of all, I would uh, like to thank the uh, organizer for uh, uh, inviting me for a nice uh, meeting. So I'm going to talk about uh, some of the uh, challenges in uh, source parameter estimation in gravitational uh, wave astronomy. Uh, I'm Rajesh Naik from uh, ISR, Calcutta. This talk is uh, not going to be very heavy. It's a bit lighter on the, this thing, and just to show some of the uh, this thing. So I'm going to uh, talk about uh, briefly about the detection-wise uh, parameter estimation uh, and uh, how the parameter estimation works. Uh, MCMC method that is being uh, uh, most uh, popular method used in the parameter estimation and. Uh, how to go beyond Markov chain. So that is uh, uh, some of the issues. So uh, yes, post uh, detection, gravitational wave uh, entering into new era, that is all fine. So what we have is a very weak uh, signal uh, buried uh, in the noise, so that makes it uh, uh, data analysis an important part of uh, gravitational wave uh, astronomy. Uh, and astronomy and astrophysics uh, uh, essentially needs the source modeling and uh, parameter estimation, which uh, tells that whether the model which you constructed for the uh, source is uh, right or it tells about the more about astrophysics. So that is why we have data analysis plays a very important uh, role. So let me first uh, start with the detection problem. You have a uh, data uh, stream which is uh, recorded, uh, has a signal uh, and uh, with certain characteristic uh, nature. So it could be Gaussian or it may be a little deviated from that as whatever is. It has some uh, char characteristic nature. And whenever the signal is present, the statistics uh, changes slightly. And the basic goal uh, of detection is to determine uh, when uh, the signal is present, the distinguish between the statistics uh, in presence of signal and in absence of uh, signal. So the two main entity comes is the detection probability, that is the probability of uh, uh, PDF uh, corresponding to the signal being present and the false alarm, that is your noise, the uh, PDF corresponding to uh, not uh, signal not present, that is noise only probability which is uh, behaving like a signal. So these two plays an important uh, role. So what uh, uh, we have uh, is a Newman uh, Pearson approach. In this uh, case, uh, you uh, have a likelihood function, uh, and then you start with uh, having a, a threshold uh, based on the uh, false uh, alarm rate. And you fix that, and then maximize uh, your likelihood uh, ratio, which is essentially the ratio of the two uh, PDFs. So you can uh, completely assign this uh, as you have a likelihood function, which is uh, defined in terms of a ratio of uh, two PDFs. Uh, pre predefine your uh, false alarm probability, and then maximize the likelihood function uh, would uh, corresponding to your detection uh, function. So this is uh, what you call is a post pre-detection. This thing in the post detection, maybe you are not playing so much importance to false alarm. Maybe you don't want to uh, be too careful. Maybe this could be changed. But uh, uh, currently, this uh, follows the main, uh, this thing is a false alarm probability, which is being fixed uh, before you uh, get into detection uh, statistics. Now, the parameter uh, estimation, which is also need to be done, it's also depends on this uh, likelihood function. Uh, which takes the maximum value when the uh, source uh, parameter, that likelihood function is built on the source model, and all the model uh, parameter which goes into modeling source uh, enters into likelihood function, and uh, that takes the maximum 
maximizing the likelihood function also uh, leads to the estimation of uh, uh, estimation of uh, parameters. So detection uh, requires the coarsely sampling the uh, likelihood uh, function uh, and uh, the, so that you are not uh, missing uh, any a possible detection. So that is uh, what is the template placement, which uh, depends on the, uh, how the templates are uh, scattered over the parameter space. So that uh, sampling, core sampling of uh, uh, parameter space uh, on the detection problem is not good enough to have an accurate parameter estimation. So in the parameter estimation problem, you need to have a much finer uh, sampling of the uh, likelihood uh, function. So to have a just idea how uh, many parameters are roughly involved, this is not uh, the one of the uh, source model is a compact uh, coalescing binaries, two stars or two point objects, black holes or whatever going to in spiral and merge and form a single object and the waveform is uh, well modeled uh, within various uh, uh, analytical approximations or based on the numerical relativity and we have a large number of parameters based on your uh, model. So these parameters are essentially split into two parts, in intrinsic parameters which uh, depends on the source uh, modeling on the source frame. And then there are other parameters uh, when you translate the, all the uh, signal into detector or wave frame, then you have uh, other parameters such as the sky location, uh, distance, and uh, phases, and so on. So when you have a detection problem, your likelihood function may not be a, a strong function or sensitive to some of the parameters. So you uh, also, in addition, uh, the intrinsic parameters are given uh, more importance in the case of uh, uh, detection. Detection essentially uh, rely on the strong dependency of the likelihood function, the, uh, such as uh, masses, spin, or uh, arrival, uh, time, phase, all these uh, things uh, which are used. Other parameters are uh, usually ignored, either analytically maximized or marginalized. So in the case of uh, uh, parameter estimation, one has to account for all these uh, uh, parameters, not just few uh, parameters such as uh, intrinsic parameters. So parameter space is usually large, and uh, that uh, is uh, one of the main problems. So uh, in the uh, normal way, uh, likelihood function you have, it takes a maximum value when the two uh, uh, system uh, parameters uh, of uh, estimated parameter matches with the uh, signal uh, parameters and the uh, accuracy of the parameters are given by the uh, Fisher information matrix. Uh, you have to uh, compute it uh, based on the expectation value of the Fisher information matrix. This is essentially the frequencies way of uh, calculating the uh, parameters and the involved uh, uh, error or accuracy in the estimated uh, parameters. Okay, one of the, uh, another approach to parameter estimation is uh, based on the uh, Bayesian approach. Uh, what you have is uh, based on the uh, Bayesian uh, theorem. What you calculate uh, is a, a posterior uh, distribution function. You have uh, based on, calculated based on the likelihood uh, Okay, likelihood function, which uh, may include uh, your uh, various hypotheses uh, based on the modeling of your signal, which includes all the parameters. You have a prior, uh, also can be incorporated, which is your uh, prior knowledge or ignorance of the problem. What you finally get is a posterior probability function, which is a joint uh, probability distribution uh, in parameter space. This is what essentially you need to have. It uh, essentially gives you estimation of parameters uh, with the probability function, distribution function. So this essentially is the uh, function lives on the multidimensional space. Uh, number of uh, uh, parameters goes into the model. 
So there are uh, advantages uh, using Bayesian uh, approach. One of the, this thing is if uh, uh, specific parameters are not so sensitive, you can marginalize over them. And uh, you can uh, take uh, parameters by uh, uh, distribution function by simply marginalizing over the other parameter. This involves uh, multi-dimensional uh, integral. Uh, it also, if you have to have a, if you have a different hypothesis, for example, you are testing different hypotheses based on the signal model, then you can also compute the evidence and compare them. All this involves uh, multi-dimensional integrals, uh, which uh, has to be based on the evaluation or sampling of the likelihood function. Now, uh, since it is a multi-dimensional uh, uh, integral or uh, sampling, uh, it is uh, usually a stochastic algorithms are uh, best bets uh, because a systematic approach uh, is involves uh, evaluating the uh, likelihood function at too many places, and uh, uh, that is uh, practically impossible over a large parameter space. So Marco Chain Monte Carlo is uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, method. It is considered to be one of the top algorithms of uh, last centuries. Here, essentially, is uh, what you call is a stochastic process. It's compared to a, a drunkard's walk. So you essentially take a random walk across the parameter space and then uh, suitably sample the uh, likelihood function. So MCMC is uh, uh, well fine-tuned to do Bayesian analysis. So this is called Monte Carlo or GoFast. So because of the para large parameter space, it is not possible to have a systematic methods. So what you have, it's no more just for fun. This is the only way out. So stochastic algorithms only rule. So what is the MCMC? Is a Markov chain. Uh, you evaluate your function uh, based on a random walk uh, with the where uh, uh, the likelihood functions takes a larger or important value. So it's basically a chain of random walks which you are uh, doing. Uh, and uh, one construct a transition probability from uh, one state to another state. Uh, the goal uh, is to sample the uh, likelihood function with the distribution function which is similar or close to the function itself. So that it means if the function takes the large value, then you have a large number of samples around that. And uh, so that your final distribution function with which you sample your uh, data is matches very close to the function itself. So that is the basic goal of uh, uh, most of the stochastic methods, and MCMC being uh, one of the most uh, popular. So here, uh, one of the advantage of the Marco chain is that uh, uh, convergence. Convergence of uh, this method is very important as to you should know that whether you are getting a result is a genuine or not genuine. The convergence is essentially says that when your sample, number of sample goes to infinity, uh, you should get a distribution function which is uh, actually matching uh, with what you are expecting. So that is essentially says that if you take an infinite sample, then you should exactly reproduce the uh, distribution function. That ensures that if you are uh, doing a random walk, what is the guarantee that uh, you end up with the, what you want? If you want to walk from one light post to another post, uh, taking a random walk, what is the guarantee that you will reach here? So it's based on the, what is called the convergence uh, theorem. It, can, it has been showed that uh, if three of the conditions are uh, satisfied in the Markov chain, uh, it essentially converges. So three are irreducibility, aperiodicity, and uh, invariance. So irreducibility essentially says that uh, every st state is reachable from other state. That means you should be able to freely travel across the parameter space. And uh, then you have 
uh, what is called the periodicity. A periodic, uh, if it is there, then uh, if a periodicity is one, then essentially it says that it uh, converges. Invariance, I think there is a problem here. So the invariance uh, says that if you start with the distribution function, which is close enough to final what you are expecting, the desired distribution function, then it uh, uh, further transition doesn't change the distribution. That essentially says that uh, you are hitting an eigen uh, value in terms of the, the, the transition uh, matrix. So these three conditions are satisfied. You have Marco chain, uh, which is essentially convergent. So it's a very powerful technique which has been uh, used in the all of the LIGO data analysis. There may be several techniques, but the underlying engine for most of the techniques are uh, Marco chain sampling. So you, we have uh, uh, nice uh, posterior distributions which have been calculated uh, uh, based on uh, uh, this Marco chain, which essentially evaluate the posterior marginalized or uh, otherwise uh, for various parameters. Okay, so we have a nice uh, Marco chain. Why bother uh, do something else? So one of the main problem with the Marco chain is that uh, it is computationally very intense. So especially in the current uh, era where you have uh, many detection happening, then uh, it may be a computationally challenging when you have uh, uh, this Marco chain, or it takes rather long time to evaluate uh, posterior uh, distribution. Of course, you have to key, uh, see that the MCMC is backed by this ergodic theorem or theorem of convergence, which may not be available for uh, any other uh, sampling. This thing essentially, Marco stochastic processes are uh, involving the a drunkard's walk, but uh, if you speed up, drinking and driving may not be very much advised. So one has to have a method which is stochastic, but not fully Markovian. Uh, of course, it is maybe simply interesting to check such method. So one of the methods which we have been uh, experimenting uh, for some time uh, is uh, particle swam optimization. So it is a global optimization scheme uh, inspired uh, by the nature. So this is how uh, school of fish or uh, folk of birds survive, get food or whatever based on the uh, optimization scheme. Nature may have its own policy uh, how to do best based on the surroundings and so on. But uh, computationally, one needs an algorithm which is uh, essentially listed here. You have a parameter space which we call n-dimensional parameter space. You want to maximize the function uh, and essentially uh, a sampling rule how the sample should propagate uh, to achieve the maximization. So you start with the set of particles uh, with the uniform distribution. And uh, they have a velocity also uniform distribution over parameter space. Here you are essentially modeling uh, particle motion with the random uh, force acting on it. So you have a random velocity. And uh, each particle keeps track of, uh, over the, uh, when they evolve, each particle keeps track of the best possible position it has achieved with respect to this function. That is called the particle's best. There is a global best position is uh, recorded for a, a set of all particles in the entire system. What is the best possible value of the function achieved and the corresponding position is also uh, saved. And uh, the evolution rule for the uh, velocity is given by, there are two components. It takes a random uh, component in the direction of uh, best of its own direction, that is p-best, and a random uh, position, uh, random uh, direction uh, at the p-best, that is a global best position, and one 
small portion which depends on the uh, its own earlier velocity. By controlling these parameters, you can make particle to walk towards the global best position or its own best position or keep it as much as stochastic as possible by increasing the value of uh, W. So the reason uh, this algorithm is uh, uh, non-Markovian because it keeps the memory. It is, uh, it's not an ergodic process where the, uh, the next, it, it uh, preserves the memory, it uh, preserves the particle's best and uh, global best position. So that is why it is a non-Markovian. And one can stop based on the convergence when sufficient uh, convergence is obtained, but there is no formal proof of uh, whether the convergence can be obtained or not. Of course, the only way to quantify this algorithm is to by testing them based on the various uh, uh, this thing. So PSO algorithm in pictures, you have a initial configuration, which is essentially a uniform distribution. Each particle, let's say this is a particle uh, with its own previous trajectories, remembers the best uh, value of fun position at which best value is uh, h. So it uh, remembers that position. And entire uh, system of particle over its entire history, this is the best it has achieved. When you take a random walk, uh, one component along the particle, each particle takes uh, uh, effect, uh, resulting position, one along its own uh, best position and one along global position and uh, a superposition of them, it gives the next position. The successive evolution of this particle uh, converges. So let me show you a simple example. I'm not showing it to uh, gravitational wave data analysis. It might as well be done there, but uh, take a simple uh, uh, function. I'm trying to sample this uh, high model function uh, in one dimension. It can be extended to any dimension. One of the advantage of particle swam optimization is that uh, it effectively works on a uh, large number of dimensions. People have uh, used it. Uh, we have uh, this algorithm uh, 15, 16 dimension. People have extended it over 100, 200, 1000 dimension parameter space also. So, so showing this example, I'm trying to optimize this function. It may be some uh, likelihood function, or just take it as a simple function I'm trying to maximize. So leave the about 100 particles and uh, uh, see how they are doing. These are the sample uh, places where it has sampled, and this is how the function has been reproduced after the, the sampling. Now the distribution function, which uh, it uh, is shown here, is this is what actually is a function value, and the blue line is actually the distribution over the parameter uh, space. So you can see that the distribution is sharply peak at the peak of the function. However, particle swam optimization is known to ignore the local peaks. It is essentially runs to the global peak, ignoring all the local uh, peak. So that is what it says. Even if there is a local peak here, it has sampled a few points, but not given much significance to the local peak and uh, reached to the global peak. That is a, one of the advantage or disadvantage. It depends on how you see the problem. Uh, is that particle swam optimization usually ignores the uh, local peaks and strictly uh, jump to the global uh, peak of the likelihood function. So it's possible to fine tune it in uh, some little way and reproduce. However, most of the most generic case uh, is that after uh, this thing, it, you will see that you can uh, uh, match the distribution function over uh, distribution in the only for the global peak. It is, however, consistently ignores all the local peaks. So this is uh, one of the uh, problem when it comes to the parameter estimation. You can have the uh, track to the global peak, however, it ignores all the local uh, peaks. Huh? Blue color is the, uh, red color is the function, uh, likelihood function, that is a, the function value, and the blue color is the histogram 
that is the number of samples uh, evaluated at uh, each point in the parameter space. So you bin the parameter space and make a histogram. At the value, at the peak, when function matches, it takes the maximum number of uh, samples. Where the function value is small, it uh, takes the less uh, samples. Yeah, it is. It is a where the uh, values are sampled. That is on the parameter space, you construct a histogram. How many samples are evaluated in a each given box? No, it is because you see that the lemma is here. It has sampled very close to zero samples there. So this is the number of samples present at that value. So you see that the global peak, it has uh, sampled six, 600 uh, samples uh, in uh, about, uh, I think, 3,000, 4,000 samples. On the other hand, hardly any samples are present. Of course, it has sampled. We know that it has sampled few. But you can see that is a sample is uh, like any other values across the function. No specific importance for the local peak. So all the dense sampling is done at the global peak. So that is what it says. It is kind of a normalized in, to match the function value. So 700 samples is evaluated at the uh, global maxima. On the other hand, local maxima is hardly maybe 50 year less. So the, Yes, uh, it is possible. Uh, so you have this two weight factors, three weight factors which goes in. Uh, one goes to the uh, ratio to the global maximum, one goes to local maximum, and one it keeps is as much as stochastic as possible. So these are the uh, fine uh, tuning you can do. Okay, But uh, no matter how much uh, fine tuning you do, this uh, particularly this, uh, this method is essentially a for uh, tracking of the global maxima. Yeah, function, function value itself. Function value itself. Yeah, so but it is scaled. Is it? Yeah. The okay. Yeah, it is normalized to the sample value. So okay, it can be generalized to arbitrary dimension. Uh, so, uh, what we are trying to say is that uh, we can have an algorithm which can sample, uh, of course it ignores the local peaks. The question is whether you can have a detection algorithm uh, which also can evaluate the likelihood function. So particle swam optimization seems to be one of the good choices when it comes to combining the both detection as well as uh, uh, estimating the likelihood function very accurately close to the uh, value of the parameter uh, which you desire to find. Okay, I will uh, stop here. Thank you. Yeah.